In a moment, we're going to be doing this exciting problem you see here. But first of all, we're going to be talking about different forms of energy. So, mechanical energy consists of two forms. Kinetic energy, K, and potential energy, mu. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion and is defined as one-half mv squared. Now, potential energy comes in a couple of varieties. One has to do with gravitation, and near the surface of the Earth, that's mgh. It also has to do with a spring, and for a spring, it's equal to one-half k x squared. Now, in this case, k is the stiffness constant of the spring, and x is the displacement of the spring from equilibrium. So here's our spring right over here, and what you see here is the displacement listed as x, and that's what we'll be looking for in just a moment. Now, it turns out that mechanical energy will be conserved so that k1 plus mu1, the initial forms, will equal the final forms, k2 plus mu2, provided that there's going to be no friction. And friction is a force over a distance that creates heat. So when you have an object and you push it through a distance and there's friction, some of the mechanical energy is lost. And it turns out that there's a concept called work, which we'll be talking about, and that work done by friction will cause there to be less mechanical energy. Now, we can write that in an equation by saying that the initial kinetic plus the initial potential plus the work done by friction, which this term will be negative, will equal the final kinetic plus the final potential energy. So that's a general equation that will always work, whereas the equation you see here will only work if there's no friction. Now, speaking of work, let's talk about what work is all about. So let's draw a box right over here, and let's say that the box is moving in this direction. What happens is, if we apply a force to this box perpendicular to its motion, the amount of work is equal to zero. But, if we apply a force which has some component, which will be parallel to the motion, then work will be done. And here's how, pardon the pun, it works. Let's call the angle that we see here theta, and we have over here the purple force, and let's say that the object is going to displace, move in this direction that we see over here, uh, and let's say that that will be called D. What we can do is we can define the work done in this case in the following way. That work is going to be equal to F D cosine of theta. So that's one way to define work. Now, let's talk about the work not done by this rope that we have over here, but the work that's going to be done by friction. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to draw the force of friction in this direction. Now, I'm going to say that's little f, the force of friction. And you can see clearly that the displacement vector and the friction force are going in opposite directions. So that represents a 180 degree angle. So if we apply the same equation that we have here to the work done by friction, which we do, because this 180 goes in here, cosine of 180 is negative 1, we see that the work done by friction is always negative. So this term over here will always be negative, so that we'll be subtracting energy because it bleeds off as heat. All right. Now, before we go any further, there's other things we may not be using in this problem that have to do with work that I want to talk about briefly. So what we've said so far is, is that the work done by friction is going to be that basic equation we saw before, which is Fd 
uh, cosine of theta. But because this is 180 and because the force is going to be the normal force, we can say that mu k, the coefficient due to friction, kinetic friction, times the normal force with a negative number there to take care of this, is times, excuse me, the displacement is going to be the work done by friction. Or more generally, mu k with a negative here times mg times d will be the work done by friction on a flat surface. If it's not on a flat surface, it's on an incline, then the normal force will not be mg. And you're going to have to use a different equation, but we're not going to talk about that here. Now, in addition to what we have right over here, there are other ways we can define work. Work can be defined as the change in kinetic energy, and work can be defined as the change in potential energy. And it turns out that if we look at all three of these, they can occur individually or all together and represent the work done on an object. And clearly, work can be both positive and negative when the direction of the force and the displacement are the same. We've seen that that is going to be positive work, as we saw on this box right over here. When they're going to be in opposite directions, that's going to be negative. Okay, that's been a fun romp. Now let's take a look at a problem that we have right over here. So what we have here is we've got a mass of one kilogram that's four meters up, and it's going to be resting, but will be sliding in a moment, down this incline over here. Now, when it slides down that incline, it's going to encounter a rough patch here. All of its potential energy up over here will be converted into kinetic energy down over here so that its potential energy will be zero at the bottom here and it will be all kinetic. And then it will lose some energy which bleeds off as heat because of the friction. And whatever's left will be used to compress the spring and we're going to solve for the value x. So let's begin. We'll use the basic equation that we have before that k1 plus mu1 equals the work. Now, that's not an equal. That's supposed to be a positive. That's the work done by friction. And that will equal k1 plus, uh, I messed up, k2 and mu2. Okay. So there's our basic equation that we looked at before. Now, when we start this process, what happens is the object is not moving at the very beginning over here. So uh, this value for kinetic energy may be crossed out. And when the object is going to compress the spring, it will stop when the spring is maximally compressed to, so we can cross out the value for kinetic energy right over there. Now what we need to do is we need to plug in some values here. So working over here with the potential energy, what we're going to do is we're going to say that is going to be equal to mgh. And as far as the work goes, we're going to add this, but it's going to be a negative. So this will be minus mu k times mg times the displacement, which is here, that's going to be 2. So that takes care of the elements on the left-hand side of this equation. Now let's take a look at the elements on the right. Well, the only thing we have there is mu2, and that represents the potential energy of the spring when it's maximally compressed. So the equation you used for that was given right over here, and that's going to be for the spring mu is equal to one-half kx squared. So let's go ahead and put that in over here. This is going to be one-half kx squared. And all we have to do now is carefully uh, plug into this. So what we have is we have a mass of one kilogram. We'll let g be 10. And the height was four meters right over here. 
So we plug in that 4 meters. And then what we have over here is we have plus, and then mu k is going to be 0.1. So this is going to be negative, and then it's going to be 0.1 times mg. So m is 1 and g is 10, so that'll be 10. And then the displacement is going to be 2. I could have made that a d, but I put in the 2 already. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the right-hand side of the equation. And when we do that, what we have is we have 1 half. And then the value for k was given here as 0.2. So this will be 0.2. And then x squared. Now, in this case, there's only one term that we don't know. Everything else is known except for x, so you can solve for x, and that will give you the answer. So this covers a lot of stuff, and I thought it was fascinating. I hope you did, too.